choosing the artistic leaders, as it were, and there's the, um, the years of, the decades of experience of, of boards being reticent of taking on risks, so it's a risk management idea of, you know, if I choose this artistic leader, I will bring this much risk up. If I choose this one, I have fewer risks. So how do you persuade the board to go I, with I, risky the, choices? The, the truth is, I, I really didn't persuade the board. I, 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 part of my understanding with the board was that that was my judgment. Uh, when, they, when, they, when they brought me in, uh, part of bringing me in was that, that they went along with my judgments about artistic leadership. And part of that involved uh, taking risks. And so in, uh, in French theater, uh, we have successively brought in a number of the most talented, highest risk artistic directors around. So uh, Denis Marlowe uh, came in, a wonderful, wonderful director uh, from Quebec, and then Wajdi Mouawad, uh, and then Brigitte Encans. And these were, these were the stars of the, of, the, of the theatrical ecosystem in Quebec. And they all came and they were all I guess if you were a board member, reasonably high risk, and they've all done, I think, wonderful work. Uh, but it's up to it's up to me as uh, the CEO to to select shrewdly, uh, which includes people who who might be high risk, and it's up to me to try to manage that high risk. Wajdi Muawat, uh, for a lot of people, was thought to be high risk. I thought Wajdi was wonderful to work with. I you know now. now it's relatively easy because my understanding with Wajdi is it's your call. Uh, you, you're, you know, you've been hired because it's you're, your you, season. Your it's your season. It's your season. It's you have to make the decision. You I, don't have to do the Christmas Carol every Christmas. You, you don't. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, if you're sensible, you will, you will, you will, uh, you will have a kind of balanced season that will allow you to get a reasonable audience, reasonable subscription levels, which will allow you to your more popular things to cross subsidize your your more demanding things but but it's your call and uh, and when, when and Peter Hinton was was brought in here we all cheered at least I cheered yeah. I, because I, 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 I did too I recognized the risk that you had decided you were going to take for the yeah. NAC and you risked on the creative side rather than risking rather than guarding the financial side yep. you risked for the creatives and that's when we stood up and cheered but the interesting thing about Peter Hinton is is that Peter Hinton decided in his first season to do an all-Canadian uh, season. And I said to him, look, uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, you're going to have to evaluate whether, in fact, this will work from a, from a financial point of view. But, but I'm happy to support you in that first season. The difficulty he had the first season was that it was a very interesting season, but, but, uh, but from an audience and financial point of view, the season cratered. Uh, and so... Peter had to, in his second year, rethink that. So, in his second year, uh, he had to bring in a range of a, a range of of, uh, of shows that uh, uh, that allowed him to to have a more kind of balanced approach uh, as an artistic leader, in order to in order to, as I say, get to make sure that he could uh, cross subsidize the more demanding, the more interesting work with. Uh, some of the work that was probably a little more appealing. It's, it's part of the artistic director dilemma. Uh, but but the, great, the great thing about working here, if you're an artistic director, if you're a Peter or you're a Wajdi, uh, you're a Kathy Levy, is that there's probably more freedom here to do your work as an artistic director than anywhere in the country. Why? You, you, because you don't have to persuade a board. And uh, and uh, and you don't have to run your season by the CEO. You just have to kind of generally uh, tell me what's going to happen. And I I don't ask that uh, I don't ask that Jillian Kylie come in on the uh, third week of uh, you know the third week of January and say, all right, this is my season. Uh, will you approve it? Uh, she knows that it's her season. So uh, that is a unique relationship then between management and board and artistic director, as it were. Yep. I don't, I don't see that in a lot of other theaters. Well, and and look, the the I I don't <laughs> think you do see it in a lot, and 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 
And the reason it works here is because it's a large national organization. It's, we now are reasonably well funded. You know, we could sure use a lot more, but we're reasonably well funded. And, and you, can, you can very much play with that notion that, that, uh, that the, CEO, uh, the CEO is able to provide uh, a, a, a really benign environment uh, for a group of artists so that uh, they can do their work. It's not as if they don't have constraints. They do have constraints. They have financial constraints and audience constraints. Uh, my great friend John Hirsch used to, used to say to me when I asked him about audiences, he would look at me and he would, as if I was an idiot, and he would say, look, uh, you know, no director wants to play to, to empty houses. And it's true so that audience considerations are, are a factor and financial considerations are a factor. And, but, but from an artistic point of view, uh, you make your own decisions about what you think a season should look like and what you think three or four seasons should look like, and it's, and it's a good place to work. So how would you persuade, cajole, and nudge other arts organizations in English Canada, let's say English Canada now, that are, let me put it um, diplomatically, to take a card from your book, that are careful, that are safe. Um, and from my point of view, lose on the artistic side because they want to shore up, they want to re reduce the risk. How would you persuade those other boards or, or ADs, change your style uh, because it might pay off? I have tried on various occasions to say to, to say to board chairs I know and, and, uh, and, and boards that, that you always, you should always go uh, for, for, for the choice, the artistic choice that is inherently more creative, the artistic choice that is, that is inherently more exciting as opposed to the safe choice. And the reason for that is not because it's altruism but because it's good business. Uh, the fact is that uh, that an audience that an audience whether you're in Winnipeg or you're in Halifax is going to is going to find the artistic the the, the exciting artistic choice much more compelling uh, and uh, uh, there are very few very few theaters around the country who want a steady diet of Neil Simon literally or metaphorically and 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 so but you it, say that's good business but the reason there are riskier artistic adventures in many seasons that I watch is because they don't think that's good business. No, they don't. Uh, there's no question they don't. But, but, but part, of, part of my job and others is to persuade them that, uh, that uh, by giving really, really good theatrical artists and, uh, and dance artists their head, uh, assuming that these are savvy leaders because they have to be savvy leaders, they have to understand the, the elements that go into making a season. It's far, far better, again, from a business point of view, uh, to get exciting artistic leadership than to get dull, uh, dull and safe uh, artistic leadership. Nobody wants to go to see a season of a, uh, of a, dull, uh, of a dull artistic leader. I mean, wow. I, 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 you know. You're an optimist and I'm... Well, I haven't. That's why I want to spend time with you because, I mean, it's... it's this helps, as, and I get depressed when I look at some of the seasons. I look, you know, you, you had a situation. Both of these people, both of these people, are, are people I like. But, but, ten years ago, you had a situation where Albert Schultz was over here in Toronto with Soul Pepper, and Marty Bragg was over here uh, with Canadian Stage, and uh, and and. Soul Pepper was a Johnny Come Lately, and, and Canadian Stage was somewhat more established. And Soul Pepper, sort of step by step by step, won the day by being much more interesting creatively uh, than Canadian Stage was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it seemed to me that it was a no-brainer. Uh, and so which was the better business decision? To go with the more adventurous, creative leader, Albert Schultz, or to go with the slightly more business-like approach that that, that Marty was advocating. And, and you know, I, when, I, when I talked to Marty at the end of that process, Marty thought, you know, I probably I should have, I should have done much more of what, what Albert did. But, but it's a very, 
interesting, tangible example of two theaters starting here like this, and the, the creatively adventurous one uh, really winning the day in, uh, in, by, by every standard.